Cody Rhodes comes out to open up Raw, and he does a promo talking about his time back in Ohio Valley, thinking he'd be WWE champion in two years, and then he runs through all the ups and downs of his career and says, I would never tell my younger self that this would happen because it was worth every step up this ladder. And then he challenges, of course, Roman Reigns for WrestleMania. And out comes the Judgment Day, and Dominic cuts a promo on him. You know what happened if you stole Finn Balor's number 30 in prison? And so fans chant, kick his ass, and Cody says, maybe I will. And so he challenges any member of the Judgment Day to a match for later on. We had Elimination Chamber qualifiers throughout the evening, and the Elimination Chamber this year, there's going to be a Women's Chamber to determine who faces Bianca at WrestleMania. And there is a men's chamber for the United States title. It is a U.S. title elimination chamber. Seth Rollins beat Chad Gable. Good match. Well, it lasted one about nine minutes. So Seth Rollins is qualified for this match. Then we had the EO Sky Candice LeRae match, which was nine minutes. And, uh... I'm not even sure what's going on here. It was a match. It was fine. I don't really know what the point was. But they did announce before the match, and I and I was even more baffled. They go, Dakota Kai was injured at the Rumble. So then later, they did a segment where Becky wants a match with Bailey, and, and uh, Bailey says no. So Becky goes backstage. She drags Dakota out with a chair wrapped around her leg. It's like, why didn't you just do that for an injury angle? Why did you tell us she was hurt at the Rumble and then shoot an angle to injure her after you told us she was already hurt? It was it was bizarre. So for those of you that were upset about the tag or the uh, cage match being cut for time last week, well, you're going to get the full cage match next week on Raw in Orlando. They're taking it full circle back to where this all started. Becky Lynch... And Bailey in a cage next week. We had a Rhea Ripley segment, which I thought was great. Except, turns out, it was, uh, they, they did something weird. So, the story is, according to Rhea, that she showed up three years ago, and her career was just getting started, she said. I debuted on Raw. I challenged Charlotte Flair. We went to WrestleMania, and she put me in my place. Now I have won the Royal Rumble. I get to choose whoever I want. And in fact, at WrestleMania, Charlotte, I'm going to put you in your place. And the only problem with this great story is, in fact, that's not exactly what happened. Charlotte was the one who challenged Rhea Ripley three years ago and did, in fact, put her in her place. Now, this year, Rhea better put her in her place because it's time. I'm afraid. Oh, it's beyond time. I mean, look. It was time three years ago, but it's it was really time, time three time years now. ago. Exactly right. And that was the biggest problem with that feud at the time was the fact that Rhea, who was so strong on NXT, comes up and it looks like a threat, then got reduced to this little girl who was here, you know, against her hero that she watched growing up sort of thing. It just, it didn't work at all. But this whole reinvention of Ripley, she's as strong as, again, she and Bianca are super duper strong right now. You know, it's funny is uh, everyone in the chat here says uh, Charlotte's winning. You know, we had this exact same discussion last year when I told you all that Bianca Belair was going to WrestleMania and she was going to win, and you all told me she wasn't going to win, and I told you she was, and you all told me she wasn't, and she did. So if you'd like to imagine that Charlotte is going to beat Ripley at WrestleMania, go ahead, but I'm telling you, Rhea's winning this match. Get back to me when I get back from L.A. Johnny Gargano faced Baron Corbin, Elimination Chamber qualifier, and it beat him. Beat this man. And, uh, I mean, quite frankly, it was not fair because Dexter Loomis uh, showed up with what an axe. Mean? What are you mean? talking about wasn't fair? He had an axe. JBL Mike. tried to get involved. He had an axe. JBL had a hat. I think cowboy hats are a lot more dangerous than people with hatchets sometimes. I can tell you that being in this country. 
So anyway, we had a segment with Seth Rollins where it was brought up that he was eliminated by Logan Paul and he got very mad. So that's a WrestleMania match it's looking like. We had an excruciatingly long, horrible segment with MVP and Austin Theory on the VIP lounge. They just talked and talked, and I could not... I tried so hard to care, couldn't. And then finally Lashley shows up, and Austin Theory bails, and Lashley accidentally spears MVP. And then looks like he feels bad about it. Slow build here to this deal. Miz in the ring. Thinks he should have had a better time at uh, the Rumble, better number. Adam Pierce comes out, says, you've got a match tonight against Raw's newest superstar. It's Boogs, who Boogs his way down to the ring, beats Miz in a minute 14, and then Boogs his way through the rest of the show. You aren't lying about his name. It is Boogs now because there it's are a whole lot of extra O's. Boogs. Count with the extra muscle that this dude put on. Holy dude, this smokes. Guy, my God. He was he was 500 pounds of muscle, it looked like. He was just, what do they, what do the kids say? Yoked. Do they, <laughs> they say that now? We had the Becky Bailey segment setting up the cage match for next week. Which was which was weird. I mean, Becky has to force Bailey to accept the match, even though in storyline, Adam Pearson to just come out and go, "Bro, I booked this match last week, and you heels prevented it, so it's happening next week, whether you like it or not. Deal with it." Instead, Becky has to beat up her friends to force her to accept the match. That was weird. Well, they didn't want to do two of those in the same show. They'll do the same finish three times in the same show, but they didn't want Pierce going out there and doing that like he did to the Miz and Boogs. We had Bronson Reed destroying Dolph Ziggler, total squash to uh, to set up an elimination chamber match. Man, Dave tried so hard to convince me I need to see this Dolph Ziggler Ali match. I couldn't possibly care less about these two <laughs> geeks. They're they're both they come out they both come off totally unlikable characters. All they ever do is lose. Like what? I'm supposed to be excited that one of these losers will finally win? I know. We had uh, the return of Carmella, who's interrupted by Asuka. And then we and, had... And by the way, she was not Bianca. No, they, they advertised Bianca, but it was more important for us to see the return of Carmella, who was treated like an afterthought. And then a segment with Boogs to set up some other matches next week, which I didn't care about when they were over. I would have rather seen the Raw Women's Champion. Anyway. I know. Next week, it's uh, Becky versus Bailey in a cage. Angelo Dawkins, Damian Priest, chamber qualifier. Montez Elias, chamber qualifier. And Candice, Mia, and uh, Piper Niven and Carmella in elimination chamber match. Montez and Elias. So who beats Elias with his own guitar before they get in that match with Montez? There's no way that match is coming off like that. No, I hope no it does. I want to see that match. And then uh, the main event was Cody Rhodes and Finn Balor. You know, it's funny. We uh, reviewed the Royal Rumble. And then, you know, for some reason on our board, a bunch of people were going, God, they must be friends with Cody. They're so biased. And I was like, what in God's name are we biased about? And then I asked. I was like, please just explain to me what we were biased about. And I think it's been now 48 hours. No one's answered. So I think people just wanted to be mad about something. And I don't even know what. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if you want to be if you want to be mad at me for being biased, I thought Cody was awesome on this show. I thought his promo was great. I thought the the match with Finn Balor. I thought he did a hell of a job coming off a torn pec, his first real one on one fifteen minute singles match. He won three crossroads. Pit place loved the guy, cheered him from start to finish. I thought this was a great showing for Cody on this show. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets. Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her. going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny. Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> what a crummy show. 
<laughs> wow. What do you want me to do about it? What the? <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.